Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion Node Breakdown. Today's node is the Luma Keyer node. And this is another DaVinci Resolve node available within Fusion. So we're going to jump into Fusion and we're going to bring in a Luma Keyer. Now, I'm going to hit shift space and I'm going to type in Luma Keyer. And just remember, there's a little glitch within Fusion when you're searching this way. So if I select my Luma Keyer, because there's two versions, there's the Fusion version that has the uh, LKY shorthand behind it. And then there's one that just says Luma Keyer. This is the DaVinci Resolve version. But if I click it, it's going to populate my uh, name down here and it's automatically going to default back to the Fusion uh, Keyer here. So make sure you're clicking on this one before you add it. So the Luma Keyer. Now, one thing to know is all this is keying is luminance. That is it. So it's just like the HSL Keyer we used the uh, other day, but it's only operating on the Luma channel. So most footage, the luminance isn't diverse enough to really pull a decent key. So for example, let's just throw a bitmap down and uh, we're going to input our uh, media and let's look at our luminance channel. And if you look, it's pretty much the entire image. So even dialing it in, you're not getting much of a key out of this luminance channel here. You really got to finagle it a bit, but using the actual keyer, once we uh, select our color here, if we go up top, we've got our pickers. So if we select our color, it's pretty much going to key almost everything out. And there really is no good way to add stuff back in because it's just uh, kind of keying everything out. But this is what the Luma keyer does. And even though we have matte finesse, there's really no way to finesse this matte the way we'd really like to key out footage. So if you're using regular footage, the Luma Keyer is probably not a good keyer for you. But if you have other footage that is uh, pretty contrasty and uh, pretty much basically black and white, <laughs> something like this, the Luma Keyer would be fine. So let's disconnect this and uh, let's reset our Luma Keyer here. And we're going to input it and we're going to look at our Luma Keyer. So let's go ahead and select our white as our color. And uh, we just keyed that out. So to be able to see this a little better, I'm going to go ahead and throw a uh, background in. And we're going to change the color up. Let's make it a nice blue, maybe. Let's merge it. Bring this in the back, bring this in the front, and uh, let's look at our key. So on the key itself, we have our pickers. So this is selecting our main color. We can uh, remove color by selecting this minus picker. We can add color by selecting this add. Or we can use a soft fall off or soft subtract or soft add to improve our key a little bit, but it's not going to help much. Down here, we can invert our key. In addition, we can select this button to reset it and try to redo our key. Under Matte Finesse, we have uh, two submenus. Under Submenu 1, we have the pre-filter. And what the pre-filter is, is it attempts to uh, clean up the image a little bit before it's applying that filter. So it'll remove some of the blockiness. So if you have like a image that's got like a lot of that JPEG style of blockiness, using this pre-filter will clean that up. Cleaning your black does exactly that. It cleans up your black within your key and your cleaning whites does the same thing. Now, cleaning whites and cleaning blacks doesn't mean it's taking away the whites. That means it's cleaning up anything within your whites. So if we look at this, we knock this clean white down. You can see our whites on the edge. So if we're cleaning whites, that means it's taking that stuff out of our whites. So our whites are actually coming back in. Same with our blacks. If we're cleaning our blacks, it's taking stuff out of our blacks, which means it's actually removing our blacks. Our black clip just changes our black clip level of our original footage. 
Same with our white clip, we'll change the white clip level of our original footage. Additionally, we can uh, blur our radius, so we can blur that radius out if we want. And we can bring that in and out. On our uh, second sub -menu, menu, we have the option for morphing. So if we have it set to closing, which is the default, if we uh, increase, it's going to clean up some of those closings. If we have it on opening, it's going to clean up some of our openings. If we have it on grow, it's going to grow our edges out and shrink is going to shrink our edges. So let's go ahead and shrink that way to get rid of some of that white. Down here we have denoise, which is going to add a pre denoise to some of your uh, footage. Our shadows, we can increase the shadow levels of our original footage. So if I decrease it, you can see it's knocking it down. If I slam it, it's increasing. Our midtones will change the original midtone levels. So if I drop that out, you can see our midtones are dropping and we're losing some of that white in there. Same with our highlights. If I increase or decrease our highlights, and let me change our midtone back. If I increase or decrease our highlights, you can see our highlights in here increasing or decreasing. So I can actually slam that down to get rid of those. Let's bring this midtone down again. And then here we have post filter, which is going to apply a post filter to uh, clean up your key a little bit if you need it. So now we've got a fairly decent key off of our uh, original media. Under garbage mat, we have no input to actually input a garbage mat. This input is an effects input. So if I say uh, bring the ellipse in and input it into our effects, all it is doing is telling us where to apply these effects at. So it's not necessarily a mat or a garbage mat. It's just telling us where to apply this effect. So the garbage mat has three options, which is none. So we have no garbage mat. We can assign a rectangle to be a garbage mat and we can invert it. So we can change the size within our display here. Just accidentally changed our key, but we can change our size right here. We can change the edge softness. Like I said, we can invert it. We can change our center right here. We can rotate it in our gizmo here, or we can uh, rotate it down here. Additionally, we can change our width and height on the slider. And then we have ellipse with all the same settings. So we can change everything on our ellipse as well or we can select none. Under our output level, we just have uh, what output we're actually seeing, whether it's our final composite. We can look at our alpha highlight, or we can look at our alpha highlight black and white. So that is the Luma keyer. I will see you in the next no breakdown.